Today, let's talk about some of the trade-offs between using either a tagline or two climbing ropes for full rope length rappels. Hi there, I'm Jason. When we want to be able to rappel or abseil a full length of rope, there are a couple of options. One is to use a single rated climbing rope for heading up and a dedicated tag line, which is usually a skinnier and lighter line than a climbing rope and is used primarily to pull down the rope system. Another is to use either a twin or double rated set of ropes. Today, I want to go over some of the pros and cons of the two options. This isn't a how to rappel video, Rather, it's a discussion about consciously taking rope systems that work for our objectives, help us manage risks, and work with our preferred styles of climbing. Many of us are probably already familiar with a standard rappel off of a single rope. You double the rope over, set the midpoint through your rappel anchor, rig your system, and head down. We can go down half a rope length since the rope is doubled over before we need a new anchor and have to set up again. But what if our objective demands many, many rappels? Now, time might be a pressure because a longer time on the mountain can bring weather, rock fall, cornice falls, or other objective hazards. And if we aren't on a bolted route and so are having to leave gear at each rappel, we now also need to consider how much gear we can safely leave behind before we run out. Being able to double the length of each rappel means we only have to do half as many rappels down the mountain. So to make that type of full rope length rappel happen, we have these two options. It may be clearer to talk about some of the pros and cons of these options by getting into some of the common ways we rig a rappel that has two lines. Let's start with the tagline. The standard way to rig a rappel with a tagline is to thread the climbing rope through your rappel point, join the tagline to the climbing rope using a flat overhand bend, making sure to leave 30 centimeters or a foot of tail, we next add in some kind of bite knot up strand on the climbing rope, an alpine butterfly, a figure eight on a bite, or an overhand on a bite. Clip a locking carabiner through the bite and around the climbing rope. This is a carabiner block that stops the rope from pulling through and is called a Reepschner hitch. Now we can add an auto block to the climbing rope, pull up a loop of slack and run the rope, which will be taking our weight, through our rappel device. We also thread the tagline in order to keep it neat. We're really just rappelling on the climbing rope though, with the thinner tagline not creating friction at the same level as the climbing rope. Okay, sounds pretty good, right? We've gotten a full rope length rappel and we did it with a tagline that is lighter than the option of carrying up a second climbing rope. But here are some of the issues. When we pull the tagline, we are now pulling down the bend that attached the two lines together, the bite knot, and the carabiner. All of those are things that can get stuck around features or in cracks. Also, this carabiner block can create a twisted rope if you have horizontally oriented anchors, such as many double bolts. Have you ever, maybe when wrapping a present, ran a pair of scissors over a piece of ribbon in order to curl that ribbon? The sharp angle of the scissors creates a sharp bend in the ribbon. That sharp bend in the ribbon means the layer away from the scissors stretches more than the inner layer. Well, same thing with the ropes. If we have a sharp bend in the rope due to the carabiner block, then we end up with the same effect. So some people will modify the carabiner block to a clove hitch on the spine of the carabiner. This eliminates the ribbon issue and reduces the amount of material that can get stuck as you pull. However, if we use this setup, we need to make sure that our rappel point is narrow enough that a carabiner cannot fit through. We can reduce the likelihood of lines getting stuck even more by getting rid of any carabiner block altogether. Again, we need to make sure our rappel point is narrow enough to keep this time the knot from pulling through. And now we have more considerations about making sure the knot doesn't roll and fail. First, we can add that stopper knot, tying an overhand by wrapping the skinnier line over the climbing rope. And second, we have to make sure that the diameter of the tag line is within three millimeters of the diameter of the climbing rope. So we are limiting the weight advantage we could get by bringing up a skinnier tag line. As an alternative, we can tie a half Gibbs bend by starting the flat overhand and then running one tail back through the loop one more time. This allows us to connect lines with a wider diameter difference, but there are other reasons we may not want the absolute lightest or skinniest tag line. First, we need a longer tag line than climbing rope because the climbing rope will stretch under our weight. 
add on at least five meters, which adds on a little weight. Skinny tag lines tend to tangle. Being light, they are also more affected by the wind. And finally, they are harder to grip and therefore can make it very difficult to pull and release your rope. Most manufactured tag lines are going to save us around a pound to a pound and a half, think 600 grams or so, in weight over the lightest twin and double ropes. However, besides the other considerations we've talked about, that weight savings comes at the cost of having to untie and retie the connecting bends at every rappel transition. With two ropes that each can be rappelled on, we normally take the pull line and thread it through our next anchor point. That way, when we pull, it's now ready and set for the next rappel. If we did that with a tag line, the knot is no longer blocking. It would just pull right through as soon as we weight our rappel line. The biggest advantage of a tag line, however, isn't necessarily the weight savings, although that may be a big deal for some climbs. It might be that we get to climb on just one single rated climbing rope. That makes belaying and rope management on the climb a lot less complex. So of course, therein lies a major downside of using two climbing rated ropes, either as twins or doubles. For both options, we have to belay off of two strands, and that creates a very complex rope management situation while we are heading up. For some climbs, where rope cut is a major concern or core shot, like on an ice climb, for example, we may intentionally want two climbing rated ropes. But outside the benefits of those types of climbs, it's still just more difficult to deal with. Also, while we are heading up, we are bringing that extra weight of a full rope with us. Once we get to the actual rappel, a series of benefits flow from the fact that we are using two ropes of the same diameter that produce roughly the same friction in the rappel device. As I mentioned earlier, we can just pre-thread our next rappel as we pull down the rope from above without having to untie and retie the lines. We can get more friction as both ropes will bite in our belay device, which helps if things are wet or icy. Heavier, thicker ropes throw better, are less affected by wind, and are easier to grab and haul on. There is no issue with horizontal oriented anchor points because we don't need a carabiner block, knot block, or any kind of block at all. Because the friction of the two lines is very close to equal, the ropes should hold in place at the rappel point as we weight them close to equally. But there is no getting around the fact that we still have a knot, and I use a stopper because my weight is on it. That knot can still get stuck as it gets pulled. That being said, if something like a stuck knot or a damaged rope does happen, we still have an entire other climbing rated rope that we can use by doubling it over. That peace of mind might be worth the 600 grams for some people. If I were to summarize, I feel like the two climbing rated rope solution is simpler and more adaptable on the way down, but on the way up, unless the risks of my specific climb call for it, it's heavier, slower, and more complicated to manage the two rope system. I guess you could also bring two single rated ropes, use only one on the climb and then use both on the rappel, but that would be more than a pound and a half extra weight or 700 grams over two twin ropes and over three pounds, 1400 grams more than using a tagline. So I haven't seen anyone do that. For what it's worth, I tend to default to two climbing ropes and have tried to get efficient at rope management using that system. But I don't always use it. Like most things in climbing, there are trade-offs and sometimes one solution makes more sense for one objective and less sense for another. Do you have a preference on a tagline versus two ropes? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, and Share if you want to support us. For more information, you can go to our website at www.shortguysbetaworks.com. If you like thinking about trade-offs, last week's video took on the topic of balancing riskier climbing with less demanding pursuits as part of what is an ever-continuing series on some of the mental aspects of outdoor adventure. We'll see you next week and keep on getting more out of that big outside.